and welcome back to No Kidding News. I'm Bruno and I'm here to keep you informed, but also engaged. Let's start today's episode with a simple question. If one of my aunts and uncles had decided to give me one pound in Bitcoin on the day I was born, guess what? It would be worth today, ten years later. A jaw-dropping, shop-stopping, unbelievable £230,000. After that, I bet you want to hear more about Bitcoin. What is it? How does it work? What are the risks? First, the basics. Bitcoin is a digital currency. But what is a currency, you ask? And what does it mean that it is digital? A currency is a storage of value. Think about a £5 note. It's just a bit of plastic with some pretty pictures on it. But you accept it as payment because you know that you can trade that piece of plastic for goods in the future and other people will accept it too. A currency, in the end, is a convention. Most modern currencies have no other value except for the backing of a government. These are called legal tenders, which means that all prices have to be stated in that currency in a given country. And most people must accept it. In the past, all currency was backed by gold. But that is a long story, which we can talk about another time. And what does it mean that it is digital? Well, digital currency means that it's only available in digital or electronic form, not physical. Also, Bitcoin specifically is not backed by any government. Let's go to our guest, Zach, who has done some pretty amazing research for us. So, Zach, can you tell us where Bitcoin comes from and why it's so valuable? Hi Bruno, thanks for having me on No Kidding News. Bitcoin might not be as important as the climate emergency or navigating social media safely, but as I keep reminding my mum and dad, it's the pocket money of the future, so it sounds kind of important to me. Interesting point, Zach. So where did Bitcoin come from? In August 2008, a domain name was registered, bitcoin.org, and then later in October 2008, a link was published to a white paper, a special type of report, which laid out the creation of Bitcoin. The paper was written by a mysterious author who goes by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. We don't know who he is or she is. We don't know if they're one person or a group of people. No kidding. Most forms of money, like pounds, dollars and euros, is a money that is tied to a country. This means that it is backed, or in other words, protected by its own central bank. And the government of that country, the bank, holds the money. And when we move the money or pay our bills, we get charged a small fee. However, Bitcoin is different. Correct. Bitcoin is the first digital currency. Satoshi's paper in its first line said Bitcoin is to be a peer-to-peer version of electronic cash, which would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a bank. Can you explain to our listeners why is it valuable? I think there are three reasons why it's valuable. First of all, our everyday lives today have become so digital. We shop online, we watch TV on Netflix, we buy things in our digital games with V-Bucks or Robux. The second thing is that as more people learn and use Bitcoin, the more value it has. And the third thing, Bruno, is perhaps the most interesting reason. Bitcoin's valuable because the grown-ups messed up the old money. Did you know that when a country needs more money, they literally just print more money? Imagine if you work really hard for a test at school and you're really determined to get an A grade, but then afterwards your teacher says, well, you all worked really hard, you can all have an A grade. That would be so annoying and it would mess up the real value of your grades and hard work. That's what the adults have done to the old money system. Did you know that since the great financial crisis in 2008 and then through the coronavirus pandemic, central banks around the world have printed over $20 trillion of new money and that's why Bitcoin's valuable, because it's scarce. Exactly, Zach. Now that we know how it became so precious, I bet our listeners are wondering how they can get their hands on it. Hey guys, a Bitcoin can be given to you, lucky you, as you trade it for servants or another currency. Or you could mine it. Mining is a complex mathematical exercise that includes a lot of calculations and requires a lot of computer power and electricity. 
If you complete a mining process with your computer, you get to keep the Bitcoin. So what's the catch? Well, there are only 21 million Bitcoins that can ever be mined. And for every 210,000 that are mined, the amount of energy and computer power needed to mine doubles. So you have two options. If you have a lot of time on your hands, you can mine it. Or if you have a lot of money on your hands, you can buy one for $40,000. It all sounds a little crazy. But Zach, can you give our listeners a little bit more information about the criticisms that people have made of Bitcoin? As you can imagine, Bruno, the grown-ups haven't liked being told that they messed up the old money, so there have been lots of criticisms of Bitcoin. Some, as we said, argue that it is not backed by any country and so shouldn't be trusted. Some say you can't walk into the bank and ask for help if you lose it. Some argue that someone might write a new paper and create a new digital money, which proves even better and more successful than Bitcoin. Some say Bitcoin's price is too volatile, and lots of people say that electricity used to power Bitcoin network is bad for the environment. Wow! So the statement is true. With every good comes a little bad. For example, it is estimated that in a three-year time, mining bitcoins will produce the same amount of carbon emissions as the whole of Italy in one year. No kidding. Of course, lots of these criticisms are very fair, Bruno. And who knows if bitcoin will be the money of the future? It seems like it is really just too early to tell. But at the same time... A standardised, code-based measure of value and open and accessible to all and built for the digital world sounds like a pretty good idea to me. So, if I got the math right, with one penny I would get about 32 sats. And what's your take, folks? Post your comments on nokiddingnews.com. A big, big thank you to our guest Zach from Thomas's Fulham for his great research and to do our first 1,000 subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do it. See you next time. Until then, take care and thank you for listening.